Hey everyone, this is Christian and today I'd like to compare two really incredible terminal programs, the Warp and the Wave Terminal. Most of you might be already familiar with at least Warp, a blazing fast modern terminal app with really cool features. I've shown you my workflow using Warp in many of my other videos. Actually, if you've watched any of my recent tutorials where we needed a terminal program, you have seen this app. But Glatze609 <laughs> What a nice name, by the way. So you just told me about Wave, also a cool and interesting terminal app, which is fully open source, and it seems to give you quite similar features like Warp. However, once I looked closer at it, I found out, well, there are pretty heavy differences between those two terminal apps. So I thought, what would be better than just comparing those applications, telling you which one I'm using, and what terminal app might be better for you, depending on what type of requirements you might have. So let the terminal wars begin and let's get into the warp versus the wave terminal. All right, so let's first talk about the elephant in the room here, the licensing and privacy differences. As I've already told you in the beginning of this video, the Wave Terminal is a fully open source application. You can find this project on GitHub, by the way, leaving you a link in the description, of course. And here you can find all the information about it, the code, the docs, the installation commands, and so on. It's all pretty straightforward. They also have a checkbox in their app for collecting telemetry data in the settings menu that you can turn on if you like. Like, but uh, this is fully optional and there is a whole section about that part in their official documentation page. Warp, on the other hand, is, at the time of recording this video, a closed source terminal application. On their website, they say they are planning to open source at least parts of their app, like the Rust UI framework, and also potentially the entire client codebase, but none of this has happened yet. <laughs> and honestly, I don't believe it's happening in the near future. It also requires you to sign up with your email address or use GitHub, Google or a single sign-on provider, otherwise you can't use the terminal app at all. And it also asks you to collect telemetry data, but just like in Wave, this is completely optional and you can turn it on or off in the privacy settings. But I know the fact that this application is closed source and requires a sign up, that might already be a deal breaker for many people. I know this because I've gotten a lot of comments about it on my previous Warp videos. And I have to say, I totally get it. Yeah, I fully understand why people are concerned about that and I agree, this is actually something to think critical about because a terminal application, this is a place where you are typing in a lot of sensitive information like credentials or API tokens, etc. So you have to put a lot of trust into the application and of course the company behind it. However, I think Warp is pretty transparent with their privacy policy and also the sign-up procedure. So they are addressing all of these concerns in their FAQ section and they also highlight they are not collecting any input or output from the command prompt. My opinion about it, and as has always been my opinion, as long as they are providing transparent documents and they are not collecting command inputs or output, I'm fine with it. But of course, this is something everyone needs to decide for themselves if you're willing to accept this. And I would say in a direct comparison, the Wave Terminal is the clear winner here when it comes to licensing and privacy because it is open source and it does not require you to sign up. Okay, so I believe this already makes the decision a lot easier for some people. And if you're just interested in an application being open source or not, well, then you can close the video right now. But <laughs> let's also have a look at the actual features of the terminal app. So what makes the Warp and the Wave terminal special? First of all, I have to say both are just great terminal apps. Otherwise, I would not cover them at all here on this channel. They are both blazing fast. They look very clean and modern. And they are supporting both of the most common and popular shells, Bash and ZSH. Warp terminal also supports Fish, which does not work in Wave, but Come on, most people will either use Bash or ZSH. What I absolutely love about both terminals is that they are both block-based terminals. So when you're typing in a command and get some output from the console, each output is handled as a separate object where you can copy the entire command or just the output or input from the console. What else you could do with those objects, however, is a bit different in both applications. So in the Wave Terminal, for example, you can bookmark command blocks in a separate list. And this is really cool if you want to remember recently used commands for reference or add a description for documenting them. You can also easily restart these commands, hide the output or even delete a block entirely from the console log, which is so great if you want to delete mistakes from the command history. 
which actually would be so nice for my tutorial videos where I make a lot of stupid mistakes in the terminal, which I might want to hide from you. <laughs> this is not possible in the warp terminal, unfortunately, because here you can't really delete separate blocks from the command history. You would always have to clear the entire screen. However, the warp terminal has many other powerful features for blocks that are not existing in Wave. Like in warp, you can filter all your command blocks and also the output using regular expressions, which is so powerful if you're searching for a specific pattern in a log output. You can also save commands as workflows, which I will talk about later in this video, and ask the warp AI about this block to ask questions or explain the output. Also another topic that I will go into a bit more detail in a few minutes. And you can also easily share the code blocks as snippets with an integrated secret masking. This is in my opinion also pretty useful. Both have a very special way of handling the console inputs, like you can enter a command, but instead of having to use the keyboard shortcuts or arrow keys to move around the input field, you can just use your mouse, select text, easily change things, and you also have a multi-line input in both terminals. But the warp terminal takes that to an entire new level, because in warp you can really work with this command input like in a code editor, by adding a multicursor that allows you to edit multiple strings at once or change multiple lines at the same time. Also not to forget, warp has a really amazing autocompletion function built right into the terminal app and it supports most of the common CLI tools you might be familiar with on macOS or on Linux, like it supports Docker, kubectl, ansible, but also many core utilities like cat, cd, change mod, change owner. There is a huge list on the warps documentation page about which commands are partially or fully supported by the autocompletion. You don't need to install any tool for that in your shell, it is all built right into the terminal app and for me personally this is one of the big reasons why I fell in love with the warp terminal. Wave doesn't have anything like this and despite of the other features and functionalities it might have, I believe this is such an important thing that you just need to have in a terminal and this makes warp in my opinion the clear winner when it comes to command input and output handling. But let's also have a look at other terminal functionalities that I personally think are just necessary in a modern and powerful terminal app, such as opening multiple tabs, splitting terminal windows and so on. And here Warp also does a pretty good job of giving you all that functionality. You can easily add multiple tabs, give them a name, change the color, move them around and you can also split the terminal windows up and down, left or right and another nice function, you can easily move them with your cursor to reorganize them and of course change the size easily. The Wave Terminal also has a nice function for organizing tabs, so you can easily create new tabs, give them a name, a color and also an icon which looks pretty cool and you can even add an SSH connection to them, I'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. But what is a bit unfortunate in the Wave Terminal, you can't really split the terminal windows in a nice way. It has one feature that you can use to move one command block to a sidebar on the right, so you could say this is like a splitting function, but you can't resize the window, you can just choose from one of the two presets to make it a bit wider or smaller and you can't really split the window up or down. This also makes warp a winner when it comes to tabs and window splitting because you don't need any other tool for it. Okay guys, so to be honest, I wasn't really impressed by the Wave Terminal at first because it is missing many of the useful features the Warp Terminal already has built in, so you would need to find other plugins and tools for doing auto-completion or window multiplexing. But there is one area of the Wave Terminal that I just want to highlight here and I think this might be very interesting for many people. Because when you're working a lot in your terminal program, you often have to change and edit files and you probably do that in programs like Vim or Emacs. And the Wave Terminal has a pretty cool feature built in to render the output of the command blocks in different ways, like it has a renderer for markdown, code files, CSV, images or even PDF. And the way you use it is, you just enter the file specific commands with a slash in the terminal to open them. 
For example, the slash code edit command opens a file with an integrated code editor that supports even syntax highlighting for all common programming languages. And here you can very easily edit the file just like in a code editor with multi-cursor support, IntelliSense, anything you would need as a programmer without fiddling around with Vim, Emacs or any of those other programs. So that is really amazing. And you can also use other commands to display images, PDFs and so on in the exact same way. The warp terminal doesn't have anything like this. It only has a markdown integration that allows you to view markdown files in your terminal, which is nice, but not as powerful as the wave renderers. So I would say when you're editing files in your terminal a lot and you don't want to use programs like Vim or Emacs, you will love the editing commands in wave, which makes this a clear winner when it comes to editing files. That gave me some hope that the wave terminal is actually more promising than I thought in the beginning. Now let's also take a look at how the terminal programs perform for managing remote machines, because that's an area which is also pretty important to me, because I just have have a lot of Linux servers in my home lab that I need to manage and the terminal is just the best place to do that. <laughs> What is really nice in the warp terminal that it has an SSH wrapper. So that means when you're connecting to an SSH machine, it supports the same features like autocompletion, the multi-cursor input, the block-based output, and even the built-in prompt if you're using it on any remote device, just like on your local machine natively. It even has a subshell function that you can use when you're running commands in a Docker container, for example, and this enables all those features within a subshell. That is really cool, but Wave is also really strong when it comes to managing remote machines over SSH, because in the Wave terminal, you can manage your SSH connections in a separate menu that you can sync with your SSH config or just define new connections manually. And now it does something pretty clever to organize all these connections, because you can add different workspaces in the left sidebar where you can use predefined multiple tabs and assign some of those tabs to an SSH connection. And that allows you to add all your remote devices, for example, into predefined tabs and workspaces where every command input and output is automatically restored in the history, even when you're closing the connection or the program. And that feature, I believe, is really nice for server administrators because you can easily work on your remote machines. You can organize them in tabs and workspaces. You have a modern terminal for administrating all those devices and you can even use the features of the Wave terminal like the code editor command to easily change config files on your remote servers in a very, very comfortable way, all without having to install anything on the device like Vim, Emacs, you can basically forget all that. However, I still wouldn't call the Wave Terminal a clear winner when it comes to managing remote machines, simply because of the reason it does not have an auto-completion function, it doesn't have great features for window multiplexing and so on. So it's kind of a draw between the Warp and the Wave Terminal here. You probably just need to decide for yourself, so what type of features make the most sense for you, what do you think are the most compelling ones. Like if you prefer having the subshells, auto-completion, window multiplexing in your remote devices, then the Warp Terminal might be better. If you prefer to manage your SSH connections in an easy way and you like the file editing features, then the Wave Terminal might be the best. So you can see it's not easy to do a direct comparison between those programs because they have very different strengths and weaknesses and it's ultimately up to you what do you think are the most compelling and useful features for your personal workflow. Anyway, let's go on because there is another big topic that we need to talk about which is the AI integration and that has always been a strong argument for the Warp Terminal because Warp AI is pretty useful. I bet you all know the situations where you get some output from the console, some error logs or you might ask yourself, so what the hell does this log file mean? Or you're trying to remember what exactly is the syntax of that one specific git command you just don't know anymore. And there the warp AI can really help you so much in those situations to explain certain output of the terminal or generate new commands based on your description. Warp AI uses OpenAI's technology in a very clever and useful way directly in your terminal. I've already tested it in previous videos and it's really amazing. And the best is you don't need an OpenAI account for it or an API token, you can just use it in the free plan of Warp and you get 40 request tokens per month entirely for free. If you need more, you can also upgrade of course. 
But once I had a look at the Wave Terminal integrated AI called Wave AI, I was really surprised how much more powerful this integration is than in Warp. On the surface, the Wave AI and the Warp AI integration seem to be very similar to each other. You can just start a new Wave AI prompt by using the slash chat command and then use it to generate something new or explain a terminal output. And of course, you can also continue the chat by pressing the control and the space key. But now here it comes. The Wave AI integration gives you a much higher rate limit, up to 200 requests per day with the integrated LLM. But it also supports various other LLMs LLMs, including cloud-based models and locally deployed models. So then you don't need to enable telemetry at all and you can just run any AI requests by using your own deployed LLM at home or you can use an API token from your favorite AI model in the cloud. It's totally up to you. And I personally love this so much because it gives you an easy and simple way of integrating AI by enabling telemetry just for everyone that don't want to think about it, like me. <laughs> but if you are much more interested in self hosting AI models or you have your own favorite LLM that you just want to integrate, you have this option too. So I personally think Wave Terminal is the clear winner when it comes to AI integration, even though it was always a strong argument to use Warp in the first place, but Wave just does it better. So far the Wave Terminal seems to be killing it in the final round, but wait, we also need to talk about themes and customization. Because you might have noticed a weird thing in the Wave Terminal, those missing icons in front of any files and folders when I entered an ls command. And that is because the Wave Terminal does not support nerd fonts. It simply doesn't, which is weird since it, this is such a basic function to support custom fonts in a terminal. But actually, Wave currently does just have a few system fonts you can choose from and that's it. There's literally zero customization configs in the Wave terminal. Honestly, to be fair, well, it also has a dark and a light theme and you can change the colors of the tabs and the icons. It also has a section called terminal themes in the settings menu, but there's nothing you can select here. At least I haven't found out how to integrate any themes. That's a bit disappointing. I hope that Wave Terminal will bring more themes and customization settings to their terminal because Warp is much better when it comes to that section. In the Warp Terminal, you can choose a separate light and a dark theme from the themes menu, but of course you can also create your own themes from an image fully automatic or you define everything in a YAML config file. You can add a background to those themes, you can change the background color if you like, that is just much much better. And of course it also supports any installed fonts on your device, like the nerd fonts which I use to display icons in my terminal, either for files and folders, together with the ESA command, a modern replacement for ls. What's also pretty cool in Warp, it works great with the Starship prompt. That is, by the way, my absolute favorite terminal prompt. And I'm using it to show a couple of details in the terminal, customize the look and style. For example, what is the current project directory? What is the Git repo or Kubernetes context I'm currently working on? And Warp also has the possibility to add a custom build prompt that you can configure in the app settings. That does not look as cool as Starship, but it's also nice and it also works on remote devices. And let's not forget one absolutely necessary feature for me as a content creator. You can pin your terminal input to the top in Warp. So that when I'm typing in a command for my YouTube tutorial, you always have that line at the top of your window and it is never hidden by the YouTube player buttons. That is something so important to me. And those customization features are all missing in the Wave Terminal. So it has a custom prompt which shows you the current remote machine you're connected to or what directory you're located in and whether it's a Git repo, which is nice, but you can't really customize it. You can't pin it to the top and it also does not work with Starship or commands that print icons in the terminal. That is really unfortunate. And honestly, it might sound stupid, but a nice looking terminal is super important to me. So the warp terminal is the clear winner when it comes to themes and customization. Also, and I know this video is already pretty long, maybe you can already guess what's going to be the overall winner for me personally, but just to highlight a few more features that I just love in Warp Terminal and they don't exist in Wave. First, you have the Warp workflows, which are part of the Warp Drive feature, so you can define custom predefined commands with a description, variables, or any commands that you often need but are hard to remember. And just recently, Warp also added notebooks to their Warp Drive, which means this is another feature 
that you can use for writing onboarding guides and tutorials for new team members with descriptions, uh, integrated code blocks that you can directly execute with a simple click. And this is so great for cross collaboration in professional IT teams. Sure, it's definitely one of those features that Warp wants to sell as paid plans to their enterprise customers. However, in the free tier of the Warp terminal, you get all the benefits of the Warp personal drive that allows you to store those commands or notebooks for your personal workflows. And I think this is really a big plus that does not exist in the Wave terminal. So when it comes to cross-collaboration features, Warp is also the clear winner. All right, so we made it through. That's it about the Warp and the Wave terminal. Two really amazing programs, but currently the Warp terminal keeps to be my favorite one because it has so many useful features that I would miss in the Wave terminal, especially core features like splitting windows, auto-completion, customization, the Starship prompt, or having the input at the top. However, I'm really excited to follow the development of the Wave terminal. I think it does have a huge potential, especially because of its local LLM integration, and it is awesome to administrate remote machines. I'm really curious to see what the open source community might add to the Wave Terminal in the future. Maybe one day it, that will become a new favorite terminal app and we need to do this comparison again. Who knows? <laughs> but yeah, we are not quite there yet, so that's why I continue using the Warp Terminal. But now it's up to you, so please tell me what is your favorite terminal program. Leave a comment down below. And as always, many thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>